Okay, I have 703 here in Beit Shemesh. Thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Miriam Naiman, a senior advisor at Nefesh Benefesh. I'm joined on the back end by my coworker Yitz Wiener from the NBN Answers and Advocacy Department, as well as Shira Gottlieb from our marketing department. Both will help facilitate any questions that come in the Q&A. Should you have any questions that you'd like to share with our speakers this evening, please, if you can write them in the Q&A, that would be fantastic. Information that they may want to share or make this interactive will be in the chat. Tonight's event is recorded and anyone who registered will receive a copy of that recording. So if you know somebody who wasn't able to attend but you think that would benefit, please feel free to share it with them. I'd like to take a moment to introduce our speakers, psychologists Hello Kerr and Karen Vivan. They will tell you a little bit more about themselves and how they share something very important with all of you attending today. Please, Karen. Okay, good evening, everyone. This is definitely an this is definitely a, an assignment I never prepared for and an assignment that I'm very um, honored to be part of. So I wanna thank Nefesh Benefesh. And um, I thought that maybe we would start with an exercise um, of just a, like kind of like an emotional check-in, almost like you would take your pulse. And I was just hoping, cause I think what I've been experiencing and what I've been hearing other people experience as they're going through these weeks of war and knowing that their children are out there fighting, that there's just like a, a cocktail. It's just a cocktail of emotions, so many emotions at one time. And this emotional test that we can do together, if we just take one deep breath, check in with ourselves and just maybe name one emotion that we're feeling. What it does, it just kind of slows down the central nervous system and allows us just to be very present without thinking about the next step or the future. It just allows us to check in right now. And I actually do this several times a day. There really is um, no, 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 no number of how many times you can do this. It's just a very quick deep breath in. So I'm just encouraging, I can't see you. I'm just encouraging everyone to do it. Just take a deep breath in. And just, just check in with yourself. And again, there's no right or wrong emotion. Sometimes, sometimes people feel like they have to feel a certain thing, but there's really, there's really no right or wrong. It's just to feel right now what you're feeling right now in order just to be really connected with the moment. Sometimes I hear people say, I feel nothing. And then I would just ask them, do you feel the couch or the chair that you're sitting on? And if you are, that's what you're feeling. And that's, that's good enough. And sometimes people can, you know, find another feeling that they're feeling. So there's really no right or wrong answer. And there's no, I think there's nobody in this group that can um, say they're not feeling something. Um, feel free to write in the chats if you want what you're feeling. Uh, I know that today I was feeling that my legs were feeling like jelly and I couldn't find a feeling for it. So I just gave myself this feeling of just feeling like jelly. So again, I just encourage you to be curious about what you're feeling. Take a deep breath in, slows down the central nervous system. And then, um, yeah, feeling fear. There's one of the things that I think Hillel and I are gonna be talking about is the courage and the bravery that we all need to have as we support our sons and daughters being very courageous and very brave. And to say you're feeling fear is, I'm, I'm very thankful that you can share that with us. And, I hope we can give you some tools or some conversation that we're gonna to have to lower that fear, but that is a feeling that I think we're all feeling. So, okay, so we did the emotional check-in. I encourage you to take a test every couple of hours, three, four times throughout the day and and, and just check in and see what, what's going on inside there. Okay, so uh, hello. I just want to quickly um, just remind everyone that we have so much in common. We all we both have children in the combat units, um, and we and uh, I have four boys right now. 
in the north and in the south. And um, I can't stress to you more, you know, more sincerely how much my seed of being here for you is really just a support for you being for me. Like there's just there's just no difference right now in 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 what I'm going through and what I'm feeling and what you're going through and what you're feeling. And we hope through the conversation we're gonna have tonight, we could just all feel more supported. So uh, so yeah. So I don't know, Hillel, you wanna tell a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, my name is Hillel Kur. I, I'm first and foremost the, the father of two uh, proud soldiers. One of them is on the uh, uh, the front lines in, in uh, up north, named Svi. Um, he he um, he he finished his service in uh, Sayyarat San Khanim a few years ago, and uh, and then uh, then he he was uh, called up, and he went first started out in the south, and then they called up his unit to the north. And, um, and so first and foremost, I'm a psychologist and I'm, you know, finding myself, uh, um, spending a lot of time trying to help people, trying to help myself because I'm going through it and we all are together. And it's definitely a, uh, definitely a challenge, challenge on, on a lot of fronts, but, um, I, I would like to start, uh, uh, Karen, I know it's a conversation between me and you, but it's really a conversation between me and, and everybody on the Zoom. I can't see you, but I can feel you. I, I wanna I wanna start. I'd like to tell stories, so I know our time is limited. But but there was a um, but there was a, a young boy who, who came to uh, to to get a bracha from the Babacher Rebbe one time. He came with his father, and uh, the boy was wearing a baseball hat. And the kid and the kids sit, and and the and the Rebbe sees the boy and he says, "You like baseball?" He says, "Yeah, I love baseball." And the Rebbe says to him, "So what's your uh, what's your favorite team?" I, you know, I like the Yankees. When was the last time you were at a game? He says, "I, w- I was just at a game last week." So he says, uh, "You know w- what happened in the game?" So he said, uh, "Well, um, it was it was kind of a blowout. Uh, the Yankees were, were losing, and you know, in the second or third inning, the the, the, the opposing team got." Got twelve runs, and you know, and um, and so so basically, it was like boring for most of the time. So you know, what did you? So the Rebbe says, so what did you do? You know, so he says, well, you know, I did like everyone else. That you know, in the fifth inning, we had no chance. I went home. So he says, what about the uh, what about the players? Uh, you know, did they go home? So the, the Rebbe asked the kid, did, did the did the did the kid did the uh, did the players go home? They said, of course they didn't. They were they're playing on the field. They couldn't go home. Uh, and so, and so, you know, the Rebbe told the boy that now that you're being bar mitzvah, I, I'm encouraging you to be a player. So, you know, like I, I have so much appreciation for you of seeing your boys uh, grow up over the years and, uh, and, and, and see, and seeing them grow up to be who they, who they are being at their weddings and at their, and at their smachot and so on, you know, it's like, uh, it's very touching for me, but I have a tremendous amount of hakarat uh, atov to you and everybody here on this Zoom for being a player, because every one of us at some point, you know, we made that decision to uh, to become a player and we're on the field, uh, at, you know, at, and, and as, as, as world history is unfolding and we are, we, we just made that choice to be here on the front lines and 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 out of the people who who are here, we also have children, you know, together who are who are literally on the front lines. And what a tremendous schut uh, it is to to uh, to just to just acknowledge that and for everybody here that you that that we are here and that we have now. Obviously, uh, that has along with it uh, comes comes tremendous challenges and. And, and with, well, along with the pride that, that I feel, and I know that you feel, um, I, I wanted to start the conversation, if that's all right, with, um, you know, with, with a direct question about, like, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've been facing uh, with the fact that you have uh, four boys? And also tell us who, who, their names, you know, like, tell us, uh, Karen. Uh, oh, I, met, I forgot to tell you, Karen, that I have another boy. We haven't spoken for a while, but. I have another boy who's uh who's in the cure. Yeah, he's working twenty four seven in in the in the bore. You know, he's like um they're in in the, in the bore is like the intelligence unit, 
and they're um and they're they're kind of trying to f- track the enemy and and figure out what's going on. So that's also a tremendous point of of uh, so even though he's not on the front lines, he's not, but he's he's out there, and I'm uh, very very proud of both of them. But I wanted to ask you, Karen, what's it like? Uh, you know, what's it like for you, and and even particularly, what are some of the challenges you've been facing since uh, since this war started? Um, I loved your story and I'm I'm thinking like as a mother of boys, you know, there's a lot of sports in my house and I'm kind of thinking like game on and like I, I'm I'm playing here and I'm rooting my boys on to be, you know, the best players with their team. And I'm like part of me is saying like game on and I want to be so much part of that, like that cheering squad. And then part of me just wants to tell them. Game over. <laughs> Time to come home. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a very big balance, and um, I I really I really liked your story because it 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 inspired in me that feeling of really wanting to be that you know maybe that soccer mom or the 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 mom that can just tell their child like I. I, I want to see you play hard and I want to see you be great and I want to see you do amazing things. And then part of me just wants to cry and say like, is that what I really want? Like, what do I really want for my child? Like, do I really want him to be out there? So again, it's just this like crazy combination of feelings that happen at one time and how to focus that in to be supportive to our children is is really the challenge. Um, I think that they need to hear us be strong for them, but I think we also have to be there to listen and just you know understand how hard the game is and maybe how unfair it is and how you know maybe the rules change. So many things that can go on. So as as much as I, I got swept away in your story, I got swept away in this like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I really believe in just like going for it and playing that game and watching my kids be amazing and also just like seeing them and knowing how hard this game is to play and how how can I how can I support them like what what are you thinking about that Hillel like what are you thinking about supporting them when you've got these mixed feelings going on? I mean, the only thing that comes to mind, Karen, is that when I, uh, mm-hmm. when, uh, when, when he came home last week, so like, you know, he had some time off and like I hadn't heard from him for a while. And, um, you know, like, what do you talk about? Like, I haven't seen him. I haven't, you know, it's like, what do you say? It's like, what do you say? And then what, what's the right thing to say? And I, I kept on telling myself, which I've been telling other people as well. You know, it's not, it's not about so much what you say, you know, it's about, it's about being there. You know, sometimes I have these moments where I have like a few seconds. He'll call me for a few seconds and just, you know, and I realized that, that as much as I always want to say the right thing, um, before I talk about the visit that he came to see me, I, you know, he called Arab Shabbat and he said, I'm going in for a few days. Um, and, you know, so I, I, I wanted to say the right thing, you know, and I just, and then after I got the phone, I was like, I should have said this and I should have said that. And I, you know, and then, um, you know, and then I realized that what he really wanted to hear was my voice. And what I really wanted was to hear his voice. So I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily have to be uh, uh, so critical about, um, you know what exactly I say. I think it's uh, more about um, just just uh, speaking to each other and hear, hearing each other. Um, but uh, it's uh, you know find find I guess you know finding that balance of, of being supportive and, and 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 being strong, but also being emotional is is um, is is real. Like when he came to see me, I. I it was like almost a, like where do you start and what do you and what do you talk about? Um, but there wasn't, you know, I I I I kind of I didn't want to get too, you know, get too into it. Uh, we also have little kids in the house, but but because I I I didn't want it to be too intense, 
Um, you know, so I, you know, we spoke about, you know, what's going on. It was more of a general conversation and how he's feeling and so on. But at the end, it kind of, um, you know, it was Thursday. So I said, uh, could, you know, could I give you a bracha for Shabbat? And he said, sure, you know, and, uh, and I gave him his bracha. And it was emotional for both of us, you know, but it was like, let me give you a bracha for Shabbat. You know, I didn't want to be like so intense so that I, you know, it's like, right. we don't want, like we understand the, like the, the, the heaviness of the moment, both of us. We don't have to necessarily name it. So let me give you a bracha for Shabbat, you know, and uh, and and uh, so it was a very emotional moment. So there are times where, uh, you know, where I'm emotional or he's emotional. Uh, but in, but I do agree with you that it is very important to like, you know, try to be try to be that strong, uh, you know, parent who is uh, who is rooting him on, uh, uh, you know, when I can. But I don't always have that privilege because he calls it weird times. And, you know, and sometimes and sometimes it's just uh, it's just not working out in that way. So, yeah, I can relate to what you're saying, because sometimes, you know, it's like that feeling that you want to be the superstar that they are. And you, you know, how often do we say like there are no words? And so that superstar is just it's just being there. And and for me, it's better, like you said, not to be emotional to on the phone and to keep things pretty, you know, straightforward and concrete. I know that they can't answer questions and I don't want to put them in any positions of trying to like, you know, mess up their focus by asking them anything that takes them out of their, what they have to deal with. Um, but uh, I did mess up the other day. I said, uh, I know I'm not supposed to say this, but I hope I see you soon. And he didn't know when he was coming out. And so I have like a nice joking relationship with him on a regular basis. But then I was thinking, that's a little awkward for the last thing that he hears, you know, this like desire of mine of, you know, from him. So I hung up the phone and I felt bad about what I said. And then uh, I just texted as like, you know, just because I love you. And I, I did, you know, I, I, I just felt like I needed to like make sure that I wasn't sitting with any, any guilt of putting pressure on him. Right. And I just also wanted him to realize that I understood he has absolutely no idea, you know, when he's coming home and really can't do very much about, about it, even if, you know, if, if even if he wanted to. So, so yeah, so I think, uh, I think that, you know, we all, we try to be that superstar parent. Um, and I see here that someone's talking about texting. We, what do you, I don't know Hello, how you've been doing with texting, but I've been finding that texting and not expecting a response has been really good for me. Um, like I, I don't even check blue checks or any, I mean, personally for me, I don't check blue checks. I just, uh, because I don't even know they could have turned it off or I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe it's a thing not to have blue check. I just assume that they can answer when they can answer, but the message, and I think this goes along with something else we were talking about today about keeping them in mind, the message through cyberspace just like continues with them. Like it's in their pocket, you know, the text that I'm sending them or it's in their hands, even if they don't have time to find my text. I just, I just feel for me, I agree that texting is, is better. I never call. And I, I seldom wait for phone calls, but I'll often just say if, if everyone can just, you know, check in. And right. uh, and so, uh, but for the most part, it works. But what I've been encouraging is humor with the texting, you know, maybe sending like a funny GIF or something like that. Because as long as I have their attention, I want to try to like make the most of it. And so I, I I try to, you know, get them to associate the text, you know, also with a smile or something that's, you know, you know it feels good. The, along the lines of, uh, of, uh, of some, some of the things that have been challenging for me, Karen, is uh, just to put it out there is uh, just functioning. I, fi I find uh, that I have days, you know, where, where I, I can be fine and, and, and do my work and, and be a, uh, an okay parent, but there are days. Uh, I, th I think uh, I, I hope I'm not alone on this, but it's just like I can't function. And uh, and 
you know, it's, uh, I just want to acknowledge that, that, you know, I, 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 most, most people that I've been working with and, uh, you know, just, there are times that are just very, very hard, you know, today, uh, today it was, was a good day because, you know, when I had, when I knew that this zoom was coming, I, I was able to, uh, you know, to, to, to muster up the, the strength and, and there are times where I'm really just, you know, enthused and, 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 and strengthened and other times, and it can happen many times throughout the day where um, it's like you told me yesterday, like, you know, if you would have told me, if you would have told me five minutes ago and asked me about it, I would have had a different response. And that's really how I feel also that, that there's like, uh, there's these ups and, and downs. Uh, and, and I wonder if, if you feel that and also uh, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I I totally feel that way. I think I, I it's a roller coaster. Even though like there's some groundhog feeling of every day being the same, when you kind of snapshot the day, the feelings are just you know very up and down. Which is, is why that emotional test is good just to kind of know where you're at. But for the most part, the body feels it. Like you said, the body keeps the score, and so we do feel it. Um, I'd like to bring your attention, please, to just two things that came up. At this particular point, I'm bringing it up and not waiting to another section because I think that they're a little bit connected with what you're saying. Um, so one parent writes that um, she has a soldier who came home for three days from Kitsufim and had time to to sort of let, let her soldier talk it out, talk together, process a little bit versus her child who came home for 24 hours and couldn't couldn't break the holding on the I got to keep it going moment, um, you know, and said to the mom, don't cry, Emma. we can't do that now, we can't do that yet. I'm just gonna, with that add, somebody asked, what do you say to your son who fought and saw too much, all the, everything from the AV and is still fighting? Um, Somebody asked about dynamics between spouses. We're going to talk about that, I believe, in a little bit. Yeah. Um, and somebody has asked about siblings. Um, Hello, you mentioned that you still have young children at home. And I think that really resonated with somebody. So if that can also be addressed about dealing with, you know, siblings of the Krevi soldier. Thank you. Okay, let's let's start, Hillel, if it's okay with you, with the um, with the two boys. I think if I understood it correctly, you know, two two different reactions that the two two sons came home with. One came home with a little bit more desire to share, and one when one came home with a more closed attitude to like. Just when was also going to be home longer. Her daughter was going to be home for three days versus a twenty-four hour stint. Right. Well, I, I think, I mean, uh, uh, far be it for me to know anything, but I have a feeling as the war gets longer, the, the, the breaks that, 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 that soldiers are going to have are going to be, you know, now if it's maybe like between eight and 24 hours, I think that they're going to extend it a little bit, maybe to 48 hours. It's, it's what I'm hearing a little bit from, from soldiers that they're getting a little bit more time off when they're, when they're sent home. But I don't know if that's even the question. The question to me, the way I hear it is that you have all these different reactions of how to handle the stress and the challenges of what's being seen and experienced out in the fields. And as they come home, how to support all those different reactions, all those different ways of handling the stress, being there for each one, maybe having less expectation if one is sharing and the other one isn't that the other one needs to share or I don't know, Hillel, you know, help me out here because like, I, I'm really feeling that I'm really feeling that challenge as a, if, if, if I had that as a parent, how do I support both soldiers who have different ways of responding to their service? Well, I mean, I can only say that, 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 uh, you know, I, I was thinking along the lines of ourselves as parents as well, but it's, it's even more so for our, for our soldiers, everybody processes things in a different way. And one of the things that, uh, that can be problematic is if, if I come at it with an expectation that if you don't talk, then, then, you know, then that's a problem. 
I don't see that as a problem because because if that's where he's at, I think we should honor that. Uh, and so so if certain people they want to talk, and so we give them the open when when I come with openness uh, to my to my to my child, and I just I'm, I'm kind of going with where he's at. Then then if he wants to talk, he'll talk. But if he just wants to joke around, I'll do that too. But it, it's uh, it's it becomes about what he needs in order to in order to to get through it. And so if he doesn't want to talk, I I I, uh, I think that that's uh, especially at this point, that's what he needs. Like like he said, like you had mentioned, this is not the time to cry. For him, it's not the time to cry. For somebody else, they may just want to cry. And uh, it really depends. And there's no. Uh, um, and we shouldn't place upon ourselves expectations and we shouldn't place upon our children expectations as to what they should and how they want to uh, deal or process uh, with what's going on. Um, right. I had, yeah. I, had an, I had an example from my own personal experience of a son who is home. And I just said in the beginning when they got home, I just said to them, you know, I'm here for anything you want to talk about, but I didn't ask him if he wanted to talk and I didn't ask him specific questions. And I felt like that was opening the door. Um, every, like, you know, every, every relationship, parent and child is different, but I felt like opening the door in the most, um, I'm, I'm ready when you're ready um, attitude. I felt that that helped me because if he decided not to, talk to me I that would be fine because I felt like I did my job as a parent to open that door but if he did decide to do it I felt like he was getting like the most welcoming invitation that I can handle it and I guess if I can't handle it I might say to him you know I don't know how you handle it I'm having a hard time handling it but maybe tell me a little bit about how you're handling it and then ask him about the support system he has with his unit or with his group and try to, um, you know, try to get strength from where he's getting strength from. But um, that's if they're willing to talk. And if they're not willing to talk, you know, I guess, what are they willing to do? Are they willing to eat? Are they willing to sleep? Are they willing to go out with friends? Are they willing, you know, just just see what they are willing to do and and and, and enjoy that because they're being, I would hope that they're being their most true self and 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 that's what we want from them we want them to feel clean of any expectations from us of what we want from them um so um i think this is really important for all of us who have never we don't have this shared experience my israeli friends don't have this shared experience and and perhaps um breaking into your rhythm but i think that um you are able in this forum to help people feel like we are all in your living room and people are feeling comfortable to ask some questions like they're okay maybe during the day but at night your your imagination can go to a lot of places sleep can be something that you know you're you're waiting god forbid for news you're on edge all the time what 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 tips what real tips as parents of soldiers yourself you know exactly where these people are at can you share um hello if it's okay i'm just gonna do a quick psychological one but then i think we need to get kind of like personal because yeah. we can relate to this question very well but if i was just do a psychological one that if we take our hands maybe you've seen this before and if this is the brain then right here is the brain stem. And then if I take my thumb inside here, this would be my limbic area of my emotional responses. And then if I close my hand, this would be like the more cognitive piece. And what I started to think about um, as I experienced the same thing from the question was um, the nighttime is like a trigger, I think that for our brain stem, for our instincts, and when our instincts get triggered, our emotional system kind of like flares up and our thinking goes away and we can bring it back together. And that, that takes, that takes some work, but I think just being aware that nighttime or even 
before dinner time or as the day, you know, now the day is shorter. So we're even like starting to think about maybe three o'clock. It's starting to get dark at 430. Like whatever it is, it's it starts to trigger this survival response of ours and our instincts. And I never really thought of nighttime, but I mean, back when in the primitive days, nighttime was scary. That's when like a lot of wild animals came out. And so I think, you know, our primitive system does get triggered at night. And if you, if, I don't know if it's, if it's helpful for you, but it's been helpful for, for me to remember when the emotional response like starts, it's so strong. Like it just like pops off the whole shell of the cognitive brain. And then all you have is the emotions. So we could talk about how to pull it all together, but I'm just like wanted to share that, that that might be what's happening. And that might just be like a very good awareness on your part that the emotions are just like, are, are swelling up the brain and taking away the, the thinking part. And it does make sense because nighttime does trigger, I think, survival. So just wanted to share that like awareness of what, what actually is happening and, and, and knowing that stress is definitely. So what definitely. do you do, Karen? I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, I, I do work with aware. I like awareness. So like that awareness that, oh yeah, it's nighttime. I'm going to start be thinking this, this way. My thinking's going to get a little wacky. I'm going to start looping. I'm going to start, you know, maybe checking the news more, or I'm going to be needing more things just to kind of distract me or to keep me like grounded. Like that's when like, I have to like really pull myself together. That helps, but just like the, the awareness that this is a normal response. Like this is what happens at night. We get nervous. And when we get nervous, we worry. And when we worry, we start like kind of going into like all the different things that could possibly happen. I happen to be, just I don't for anyone else who was like me, a morning worrier. Like before I before I get out of bed, I need to know that everything's okay. So for me, I'm pretty tired at the end of the day. So my brain doesn't spin. But in the morning when I wake up, I'm thinking, what did I miss? So that's when my brain like starts to activate. I don't know, you know, if that resonates for people. But um a lot of the things I do would be, you know, to remind myself that, you know, some of this is out of my control, but what's in my control is to be strong. What's in my control is to reach out to someone. What's in my control is to breathe. What's in my control is to take a drink with, you know, that, all these things that I know help me, you know, I go to, I don't, I don't stop myself from anything that makes me feel better. Well, now I'm feeling a little better because, uh, you know, like uh, if I if it's two o'clock in the morning and I can't sleep, which has been the uh, the situation for the past, uh, you know, since the war started, where I have a very difficult time sleeping, I'll do whatever my whatever I'll do whatever I, if I if I want to go down and, and get a drink or have a meal at two in the morning, I'll go do that uh, because that's where I'm at right now. This is not my life plan, but this is something that's going to get me through. Uh, and um, my 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 brother uh, my brother uh, uh, Rashi t told me, uh, who's also a psychologist, he told me, you know, just like it's about getting through the day. Uh, at this at this uh, some days are just like that where where we just we want to get through the day, and if you, if you do what you got to do to get through the day, and I don't think we should be self critical of like you know oh I you know I I shouldn't have watched that show or you know how could I have. Had a, you know, had a, had a drink at whatever, whatever, whatever I did, you know, like it's about getting through the day. That, that resonated with me. Um, but in terms of, but in terms of uh, general coping st strategies, you know, uh, I, I can say that uh, doing has been extremely helpful. Doing, um, uh, on the one hand, you know, allowing myself the flexibility to like, if I can't, if I can't do it. If I have to cut down work a little bit or if I have to, I'll do that and I'll embrace that because I'm not in a place where I can handle it at certain points. Uh, but 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 doing for the soldiers to me has been a tremendous source of help. As you know, um, I have I have like uh, I have this thing where I'm like, you know, getting uh, getting Shabbat food to the uh, to the to the soldiers. And I think about that often and I'm kind of like always trying to figure out how I'm going to get the, uh, the, you know, the Shabbat treats to the soldiers. So the doing is, has been, um, 
has been uh, very, very helpful. Trying to find things that uh, Rabbi Sachs once taught me, or as another Racha taught me, that if you want to know your shlichut in this world, if you want to know what you're meant to do at any given moment, it's what you're passionate about meets what needs to get done. What you want to do, what needs to get done, that's where you know that that's where your shlichut is in, in, in this world. So, you know, if I'm passionate about herring, which I am, I'm not embarrassed about that. So I'm going to make herring for a thousand soldiers this Shabbat because that's what I can do. And that makes me feel good. And I, I know that it makes, you know, and it, it helps them too. So I find that the, that the doing uh, uh, for others at this point has, has been tremendously helpful. And when I'm not doing, my, my mind gets uh, goes to places I don't want it to go so much. Uh, so that's that's one of the things that that's tremendously uh, helpful. What helps you in terms of tips? Yeah, yeah I, I, I love I love what you're saying. And um, it's just it's it's just making me want to be really honest that I know that watching the news at night is not good. But I watch the news at night because just to hear their voices and know that I'm not making all this stuff up it just kind of is help helps me put it all like in perspective it doesn't mean I understand it and it doesn't mean that it's making me feel better but it's just kind of giving me like I, I sort of think of it like a snack like it's not a meal and it's not really something healthy but it's just something I desire I just sometimes just desire that noise of whatever they're saying on the news just to kind of like maybe just give me some sort of comfort that I'm not alone in my head with everything. So um, I feel like, you know, as a psychologist, sometimes we're, we're held at a higher bar, you know, we don't check our phones, we don't do this, we don't check the news all the time. But right now, I can't say that, uh, that that's, that's, that's the life I'm living. I'm, I'm really listening to what I want. And if I want to watch the news at night for however long I want to watch it, I do stay away from videos. I actually want to be really clear about that. Videos are, I think, the most dangerous part of, of psychological healthiness right now. I think that there's a lot being sent around, as we all know. And um I think the the videos can be very triggering and plus our brains can't really differentiate between what a video is and what reality is. So although I'll listen to conversations going on in the news and I'll check the news in the right in the you know the writing news the the print I I won't watch videos. I I I made I made a solemn oath to myself no matter how tempting it is to see a hostage because it's just like an unbelievable, you know, concept that a hostage is speaking and that we can hear them. I, I those videos and other videos, which I do think, you know, goes to a question I saw, like your soldiers, my sol my soldiers, not so much because they weren't down south fast enough, but some of your soldiers did see the, the slaughtering and the desecration and the inhumaneness of what happened October 7th. And I don't know, if, you know, Hillel, if we want to talk right now, I mean, I think we need to talk about how to support parents who know their, their kids saw that. Um, you know, I think we, I think we do. We, I, I saw a question and I was really sad about having to uh, think about what they're, what they probably experienced just horrendous 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 and having to stay out there in the fields and continue to fight and continue to keep their focus on on you know being being their their best is just is just without any time off or without to you know the right probably t pool that they need i feel like i want to really try to support if there's parents out there i saw a question where uh, a soldier was out there and Somebody else is that. asking as well, just on that. If they know that yeah. their soldiers are is... trauma and keeping it inside, but they don't yeah. want to talk, if you could please touch upon that in addition to- I think that's going to be one of the hardest. Read. I think that's going to be one of the hardest. I mean, I'm not even thinking as a parent. I have to tell you right now, I'm thinking as a psychologist. I think that's just one of the hardest questions 
that we have to answer because we have no idea what it was like. Um, we just have to, we just have to be there. We just have to be there. I don't know, Hillel, I, I'm just imagining what it's like as a parent to, to know that their child saw that on October 7th and like the supporting that parent is for the therapist, the psychologist to be there for the parent to be for the parent to be there for the child. Parent just has to be a rock for that child. Do you, am I, am I just, am I, I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> am I taking this too I, far? I say, I said before, I think we have to honor where they're at. Uh, uh, of course. You know, and if that's, uh, yeah. that's what they, they don't want to share. I, I want to yeah, say, yeah, I wanna yeah. say no, I, I didn't even say words. I just said they just have to yeah. be there. And I also want to say I, I we've discussed this, and I, and this is my experience uh, with my own children, and 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 with the work that I've been doing. I believe that and uh, that our children, uh, mine and yours, and everyone here on the Zoom, they have uh, um, they have prepared for this. They have uh, they're out there, and and sometimes I feel that that the soldiers out there are in a better psychological state than we are. Because they're out there, they're doing things, they have more control of the situation. And I think that to, to the most part, if I had to, you know, uh, I, I put words to what's going on out there. And I, I was, uh, I did get a chance to, uh, to go out there a little bit last week and speak to people. Um, they're okay. They have support systems. They have th their brothers. They have people who, who uh, you know, who they've trained with that they that they've, that they've gotten to know and love as brothers. They go to each other's smachot. They, 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 they have a support system and they, and they are extremely, extremely competent. And, uh, and so the overall feeling with, with the soldiers that I get, that it's not just the videos that I see, you know, in order to increase the morale of the country, I think it's the actual facts on the ground. My own son, he's not, he's not going home uh, to be, he's not going home about fighting. Uh, and he's not, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, 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 when he was uh, seven or eight years old, I, I put him in a hoop for judo. You know, he didn't, uh, he didn't want to fight. He, he, he didn't want to fight, you know, like he, he, he's not, he has no interest in that. But, but when he's out there, um, you know, when he's out there, um, he, he's, he's even, he knows what he's doing. He's not excited about it. He's not. And, and I think uh, there are people who are very excited about about taking care of business and protecting this country there are those who are less so but overall i feel like they 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 uh the morale is is actually quite uh um i, I can't say they, they there's a pos there's a there's a there's a positivity out there right the, the morale i actually heard from one of my sons that they felt it was harder to be at home and um you know, I'm, I'm now living with my daughter-in-law and her four yeah. children, four children under five, while her husband is, um, or, and my son is in the army. Um, watching her, you know, she, she, I, I can imagine that maybe there is some truth to it, that it's harder at home. Um, it's an unbelievably stressful lifestyle for the for them for the wife to have knowing her husband is is there having to navigate all the questions from the children and keep her her balance and composure and and then feeling like you know every day you know is is the same thing over and over not knowing when it's going to be over and looking her children in the eye and not having any real answers and looking herself in her in the eye and feeling, you know, the loneliness and the, you know, the kind of like the husband just swept away the, you know, just torn apart on October 7th, you know, every, every man who was called up just went quickly. I mean, didn't even think that they were going to be away from probably more than three or four days. Um, and missing all sorts of milestones in, in children's lives and in their own relationships with their wives. So um, so I guess what I'm saying to you, Hillel, is like, I agree with you. I think the morale out there is really good. And from what I hear from my sons, they say it's harder at, they feel it's harder at home. 
one funny thing was I said to my son, I said, do you need anything? And he said, I should be asking you. We have so much here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it was, it was nice, of course, like to, to have that, you know, lightness with him and that awareness that like so much doing and so much giving was happening. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the people at home feel that um, the people out there are, are, uh, are, are sacrificing you know, a lot, but the people I think at home are really feeling the emotional draining of the balance, whether they're supporting their child as a, as a soldier or their, or, or their husband as a soldier. Right. One of them wrote, she felt like she was living in a parallel universe with her husband. I'm sorry, Hillel, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No, that's a, I, I just, I know that our time is limited and I did want to get to a very important question, at least for me, uh, to ask you, Karen, because, uh, uh, and uh, it's, just, it's just to ask you what um, what gives you chizuk at this time, you know, like with all the difficulty and you're watching kids and you're working and you're doing a lot and uh, you have four kids. What gives you chizuk at this time? Strength. <laughs> if you if you can, if you don't mind sharing. No, I I love to share and I I I, just, I actually feel kind of flooded with ideas of where to take this because thank God I. I am a very, I am a very positive, hopeful person. So what gives me chizuk is to go kind of back to myself, and 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 remind myself who I am. I'm I'm a person who believes, and um, I I never want that. I never want that being taken away from me. So I get tired. I get angry. I get cranky. <laughs> um, you know, I I get all sorts of different reactions, but at the chizuk, the chizuk part is the belief that um, we are in um, a, a world-changing situation right now, and I would do anything for my children to not have to be the leaders there, but I am so proud of the opportunity we have to not have to live in fear, to, to, to for, for people in the future to have some peace of mind that they are in a country that we love so much and don't have to fear living in it. I think October 7th really, 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 really rocked my world. And I had to find that belief again. And when I did, I was like, I'm not never letting it go. I'm never letting it go. So for me, it's just kind of going back to who I am, I think, and I'm a believer. You could you could say it's a naive or innocent, but for me it's it works. It gives me strength that um there there God is God is with us and God God wants a better better tomorrow and I believe in a better tomorrow after what happens October seventh. Yeah, I, I so much uh, connect with that and and uh I'm also just terribly, I'm, I'm very, very filled with with pride about about the fact that that my my boys are out there. Um, that gives me chizuk. Also, also just this overall feeling of like we were in such a low place uh, just just a few months ago, and uh, and to see the, the 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 country band together as they are now, it's almost hard to imagine to see how much uh, love there is, and I want to believe that it's long lasting. That you know. That psychologically speaking, you know, uh, people band together during crisis. That's true, but for the Jewish people, it's it's something inside that we all knew that was there. We just sometimes you just gotta, you know, we have to go through some hard times. So I, I wish these hardships on anybody or these challenges on anybody, but right. I do, uh, I do see, I just see a tremendous uh, t togetherness uh, in, in our country, and it gives me a gives me a, a tremendous amount of uh, of, of chizu, um to, to see that um right with the awareness that there's work to do afterwards i mean people sure. have seen terrible things and we are you know i think that's the other part of who we are as people you know we're we we're, we are together now and we're going to stay together and we're going to be there for each other and that gives me also a lot of chizu. i just so, want to say one thing Oh, so go ahead. I, I was just to... gonna, I, no. I just go said ahead. we. One of the things we were talking about when we were planning was to talk about this like uh, war life balance. You know, like uh, 
how 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 we can maybe help people who are trying to find that balance between war war and their home life some maybe some tips or some ways that parents can you know try to try to find more balance we know we know when, when we are in balance there's always you know this like uh depletion of energy on the other side and i think people might want a little bit more chizuk for the home since there's so much focus on the war so how how do we kind of like rem help parents bring back the home life from you know from it being kind of like hijacked by the war <laughs> Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a. It's a hard balance. I, I. I did tell you before that I feel like that. That um, that the body keeps the score. You know, if you, you know if you're watching too much uh, news, if you can't, if you if you wake up and then and the, you didn't sleep all night and you and so it's really about about finding that that balance and giving yourself. I believe it's about giving yourself some leeway, uh, to to and not like I said, not being self-critical and critical of others. So uh and 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 saying like you know you should you know you, like i could tell my spouse you should be reacting this way or why you know making like we're very my, my wife and i are different in, in the way we're processing as probably every single person here on the zoom is different and it's about that self-awareness of what it is that we need and it's about communicating uh, you know those needs and finding that balance I know I'm not exactly answering your question, but I feel yeah, like- Yeah, I, th I, think, I think you're like leading us down the right path. Um, I like where you're going. And I guess what I would add on is like from personal experience, I've noticed like we kind of, you know, don't take the time to really um, maybe make the proper meals together. It's been a little bit like, you know, eat when you can. And I'm, I'm thinking like, making a mental note for myself that I think, you know, making sure we have a little bit more of those. I think during Corona, we had all that time to like prepare meals and sit together and have meals together. And now like we, we kind of forgot how maybe that time is so important. And I know also personally for myself with my husband who, you know, is home that we've like looked at each other and just said like, we need to get outside. We just need a walk, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Today, so, today. So I think, today you know, that that communication, like you said, and and is important, but just like what works, what what works to to kind of help us not feel like we're sinking. And it's hard because if two people are sinking in the house, you know, it's it's very hard to be the the one who saves the other. So it's kind of good to have when you're feeling a little bit strong, like, you know, that that walk was really good. We should make sure we do it again. Or, you know, having, you know, the cans all on, you know, at night, you know, just to kind of bring a little atmosphere into the house, you know, was very relaxing. We should remember to light the cans all and just working together to like recreate what home, this new home together is like. You know, we did it during Corona. We, we knew we liked to, you know, people like to cook and people like to do crafts and people like to, you know, bring new things into their lives because they had the time. Now we have, you know, a little bit of a different challenge, but we have that responsibility to each other to keep that home safe and and comfortable. And and like you said, the communication is so important. It, it, it's so important. You, you spoke yeah. a minute or two about the day after when all of our children, please God, come home. And they're are those simanim of the trauma and the need to find its place. And not every parent is that rock that you spoke about. And for uh, a young adult who never thought in his or her life to need to go to a therapist, how can a, a parent help bridge that journey? Um, I answered to somebody that they may even want to seek counsel on how to bring up certain conversations because we all miss that chapter in our parenting book. Um, if you could just address that a little bit, please. Well, I'll just like say from my experience these past few weeks, I've, I've spoken to more people who've told me they've never spoken to a therapist before. 
or more parents who said my my kid probably won't call, but you know, I'm going to encourage them to call. When they do call, and if it's the right match, and thank God, I I mean, personally for me right now, I've had a very, very wonderful conversations with people who needed to talk. It happens, the magic happens. Um, we, we don't need to try hard. It's actually, we have to try not hard and just open the door. Um, it's a, it's a new, it's a new, it's a new medicine, I guess, you know, this, well. this new medicine of, of how to take care of ourselves by being together, by being honest, by being open, by trusting, by feeling compassion. Um, it's, it's, it works. It works. Um, I've, I've, I, I mean, I, I've seen it work. I, I have no doubt it works. But my, my hope is that everyone will, will be open to being able to find that person to open up to and let out whatever needs to be let out. Um, there's a nice acronym for the word love, and I'll, I'll just quickly share it because it's another quick tip. Um, if you take the letters of love, you you have L for letting go. And this this could be between the person and the therapist. This could be between the the child and the parent, the the husband and the wife. But if you take the L for letting go and just being able to really let go of whatever it is that's like blocking you from from being and feeling what you want to be and feel, and you let go of it, you have that space to um to open up. And then with the V, you you get reminded of the value of human connection. And then with the E, you know, you can engage in, in real communication. So it's a little, you know, it's a little kitschy, but it, it really is something that I think we all we all need and we can all like find that person for that for that love experience. I'm sure if we were in a room and I said, how many people are appreciating hugs more than ever before? Everybody would be raising their hands. We need yeah. to end soon. Hillel and Karen, I hope that it's okay. People have asked for your email addresses and I'm going to include it in the recording that everybody will be sent. Uh, I, I don't think there's anything Hillel and I would want more than to be approached by any of you by any questions or needing of any support. We're all, we're all in this together. And um, I think that's the only reason why we're here. We're not experts. We just want to be together. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you both enough. Just the comments on, on how real and genuine this past hour was. I thank you, our audience, for coming. And we should only hear very, very good news in the near future. Thank you, everybody. And have Amen. a good evening. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.